Well, hi again. My name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. And in today's video, we're going to focus on how do we make a good user experience for entering a lot of data. We're going to choose to do this by the tabbed or a wizard approach to entering data. So stay tuned. One of my favorite pastimes in Power Apps is all about creating a beautiful user experience that feels not quite like Power Apps. So in this video, we're going to focus on, hey, I got this, I got this project in my lap right now. It's a PDF that I want to go ahead and convert into a Power App, or it's a old application I want to convert into a Power App. Either way, it's a lot of fields. It might be a hundred fields. And putting that all on one screen is going to give your users first, A, a headache, and B, it, you're going to get bad data because the user gets so tired of entering data. So you want to find a way to break that up. And there's two approaches we can do. One is the tabbed approach where I kind of do a tab, hit the next tab, and so on and so on. The other one's kind of a wizard approach. What we're going to do in this video is kind of blend the two together where we have a tabbed approach with a next button like a wizard also. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and show you my power, uh, my power app. Let me go over to my, uh, sorry, my, my SharePoint list. Now the approach we're going to show you will work no matter what your system is. So if you use a tabbed approach, if you don't use a tabbed approach, or if you use a, a SharePoint list, a SQL server, a Salesforce.com, it doesn't really matter in our case. We're just collecting a whole lot of data. Now this isn't a whole lot of data in this case, but this is going to simulate the challenge. Okay, I didn't, I didn't have the patience to add another 20 columns here, but this is for a vendor setup. My vendor name will be right here. And what I want to do is I want to kind of break this up. So all I have my first tab will be from here to, how about like right here? And this will be uh, the basic info tab. My next tab will be from here to here. And I'll call this just vendor setup. And then my third tab will be right here. And it's going to have the attachments tab. And all my attachments will go there. So we're basically going to enter in, we'll gather a little bit of information from each tab. We'll at the very end allow the user to upload any kind of attachments. They'll hit one button to submit all of that in one batch to your SharePoint list. Again though, SharePoint list is not required. We could use whatever your data source of choice is. Now my application so far, I'm assuming a few things inside of this. I'm assuming first of all, you know the basics of Power Apps. This is a, an intermediate to advanced session in our case. If you are new, that's absolutely fine too. Welcome. Uh, go back and watch my, uh, my my playlist called Learn Power Apps uh, from Pragmatic Works, and that will get you some of the basics of what we're going to be using in this video. The first basic is how do we create theme colors? I did that with these variables right here up top, and I created a primary, a secondary, and a background color. So when I go to my first page here, you're seeing that when I'm set this vendor creation page, I've created a header bar and a footer bar using that var primary. Uh, my background color is just light gray. Uh, we are not going to do any kind of naming conventions in this uh, in this video, but yes, you do want to do some naming conventions. All right. So step one, I have my data source created already to my SharePoint list, and now I want to go ahead and use that by dropping my form in. Now you've probably seen this a million times, so I'm not going to go through too much deep into this, but I'll drop in an edit form. I'll wire that up to my vendor setup now. It's going to go ahead and drop in all my fields, which I don't want. I don't want things like the attachments. I don't want a start date, and I don't want a sponsor or, or an end date. Don't really care about this one yet or the status yet, and I'll leave it at these four fields here. Of course, we would have more, more than four fields, but in these, in these kind of examples like this, you typically don't want to have more than 10 fields or so on a given tab. Okay, I want to go ahead and make it a little bit wider here for us. And then now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and change this title to like vendor name, for example. Let's double click on it and call it vendor name. Okay, a title column you have to have inside of SharePoint. Uh, you don't have to call it title, but we're calling it vendor name in our case. All right, I'm also going to go ahead and put a fill color on this, uh, this form so it looks a little bit more appy. There we go. And then now we've done that, we're ready to go ahead and create our tabs. To do our tabs, we're going to create a horizontal blank gallery. So under insert gallery, you might find the gallery on the far right under a down arrow. Insert gallery, we'll do a blank horizontal. And by doing this, I'm going to go ahead and skinny this down kind of where it's roughly outside my footer, right? 
uh, something like this. There we go. I'm then going to hit the pencil icon to select my first record, and I'm going to drop a button in. Okay, so not very pretty yet. I'll go ahead and kind of move this around to kind of make it a little bit, a little bit cleaner here. Just kind of move it so I can kind of expand it just a little bit here. Well, don't worry, we'll get, we're going to fix this. I'll move my button to the top left, and I'm going to shrink down the cell just a little bit so things kind of fit in. Now, to make this button feel more like a tab, our trick is to go over the advanced ribbon on the right side. I'm going to change my border radius left, top left, to maybe a 30. I'll keep my top right one at 10, and then I'll make my bottom ones both zero, so it hardens the edges on the bottom, and it curves the edges on the top. Once you do that, you don't need as much space vertically here, so I'm going to go ahead and skinny that down vertically. There we go. And then now we can kind of move that closer to this, this, uh, this form right here. So it's starting to get closer. Of course, we can spend some more time and nudging it and, and getting it just the way we want, but you get the idea. I, I don't want to bother you with this video of actually have, of me you know, trying to get this UI just perfect, but I would eventually get it, I would make it where it lines up to that there, okay? So with that now done, my next step, I want to go into course, I'm going to, for the time being, I'm just going to go ahead and do a fill color on that button right here, and I'll make that fill color property right here. Right now it's blue, and I'll make that, oh, did I lose it? I must have lost it. All right. Okay, for, for that button, my fill color is going to be, uh, I did it again. <laughs> I'll set it again, go to my fill color, and I'll just type in var accent for our example here. All right, good enough. Okay, now we want to make these tabs actually have proper values, not just button one, button two, and so on. So when I select my entire gallery, you can see it right here, gallery two, it's called in my case. I'm gonna go ahead, I will go ahead and rename this, this gallery two. I'll call it GAL tabs just to kind of keep things straight in my case. And then what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and, and influence the items inside of here. Now there's two ways I can do that. I can create a collection and have a listing of all my tabs in that collection, or I can create an ad hoc table using the table command. We're gonna go ahead and use a table command in my case with an open close parenthesis and an open close curly brace. And I'll go ahead and just call this tab colon, whatever our name of the column I wanna call it. And then I will, I'll end some of my double quotes here. I'll put my first tab name to be basic info. There we go. And then I'll copy and paste this a few times here with commas separating each record. So I have three tabs. Uh, I'll have this one as a, a vendor setup. And then my last one will be just attachments. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna wire the button up to actually use that text now. So I'll go over, and over here up top and go to my text property for the button. Make sure you pick the first record and change it from button to this item, dot, and there's my tab column we just created a moment ago. There we go. Now, now that I've done that, I can kind of shrink these down and get them a little bit closer. There we go, something like that should work. Okay, so with that now done, we wanna do a few things. I wanna make sure I show you what tab we're in as you select the tab. I need some way of color coding that so you can tell that you're in the basic info tab. All right, so to do that, when you first hit this screen one here, or not screen one, screen two in my case, I want to go ahead and create a variable that, that calls out what tab you're in. So to do that, when you first hit screen two, I'm going to go and change a property called on visible, which basically says, hey, your the screen has loaded and this code is going to fire off. This code is going to be a variable here using update context. The update context variable here uh, we'll create a contextual variable. It's only available on this one screen here. So I'll call it uh, var tab and do a colon and I'll make that first, the first tab you're gonna hit is basic info. So in other words, when you first hit this, oh, update context, there we go, update context. So when you first hit this, I'm not gonna copy this because I'm gonna use this in a moment here. So when you first hit this tab, it's going, when you first hit this, this, this screen, excuse me, it's gonna create a variable or update the variable and make it equal to basic info. Now that we've done that now though, we wanna go ahead and, and shade this basic info showing that you're on this tab. So to do that, I'm gonna select my button. I'm gonna go back to my fill color, 
property for the button. There we go. And right now it's var accent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, um, all right, if uh, var tab, okay, the, the variable that we just created is equal to the tab name, this item dot tab. Okay, so if, if the tab name basic info, if the variable var tab is equal to my tab name, then I'm, you must be on this tab. So if that's the case, go ahead and use var, uh, var accent. Oh, no, I'll use var primary. Otherwise, use var accent. So what color am I going to use? Now, that variable is not seeded yet. That variable, if you know, if I notice, I go to view and variables. Right now, it's set to blank right now because I have not left the screen and come back. The on visible command has not fired off. So I'm going to go back and then hit the little create variable again. And look now, I've got the basic info is now, is now highlighted. Okay? So, looks pretty good. Now we can do the reverse of that. If you like, if you like it the other way around, we can also do that. It's up to you. Var accent. Oh, let's see how, how this one looks instead. I think it might look better this way. Yeah, I kind of like that better actually. So that stands out a little more. You can tell that you're on the var, var info tab right now. And as you select these tabs, I want to go ahead and update the variable to be equal to the tab that you select. That's all it's going to do. So to do that, I'm going to hit the button again. And then I'm going to go over to the on select property. And we'll say, oops, update context. Look how it's going to do all the work for me here. Update context, tab, var tab, tab. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, colon. I'll make it equal to that colon, excuse me. I'll make it equal to, so when you click on that button, I want it to be equal, that variable should be equal to the tab that you just clicked. So that'll be this item dot tab. Keep in mind that, that tab column is something we just arbitrarily created. So now, as I click on var setup right now, holding down the alt key, we of course need to fix these uh, hover overs here, but that's fine. When I click on it, look at that. It actually changes the tab. So now that we've done that, the next thing we want to do is we want to only show this form right here. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this form. Right? It's called form two. I'm going to go ahead and rename this FRM basic info just so I can kind of keep track of it myself. I only want to show FRM basic info if you're on the basic info tab. So for this form, I'll go ahead and set the form. I'm going to go to the visible property of the form and say, hey, only show this if var tab is equal to basic info, basic space info. Then true, otherwise false. Now it's implied true, I do that. Now if I go to vendor setup, it disappears, go to basic info, it shows up. So we've got the core now built. So now all we have to do is go to each of these tabs and kind of finish up this work here. So I'm going to go to uh, vendor setup next. And we could go ahead and clone all this, right? Let's go ahead and just copy this. Uh, well, I'm not going to do that. I'll go up to vendor setup and I'll drop another, uh, another form in. There we go. Again, wire. Well, you know what? I think it does make sense to kind of copy and paste. Let's be lazy here. I'll copy. I'll paste. But when I'm doing this, notice as I'm pasting, I'll do it one more time here also. Paste. Okay, so I have three forms. Uh, and I'll call this next one, it says basic info two. I'm gonna change its name to form vendor setup. And I'll change the last one to FRM uh, attachments. Now, right now, of course, it's hiding everything. So we definitely don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the vendor setup and I'm gonna change my visibility. Okay, my on visible to be equal to vendor setup. There we go. So now if I select vendor setup, there it is. Basic info, that's one. Now let's do the same thing for attachments now. So attachments, uh, I'll go to my visible property. And we'll change this to attachments. There we go. Now it lights up now also. Now, of course, I need to change the actual fields in each of these. So let's start with my attachment one since I'm on here right now. I'll go to my, my form, I'll go to edit fields, and I'm gonna go ahead and kill all this, this stuff I don't need, and I'll add the one column I do need here. So I'll just go and just remove these, and maybe faster, just go and remove it this way instead. Do whatever works for you. I'll add my attachments now. 
There we go. And of course, I might want to increase the size of that to make it look feel a little more like it belongs there and whatever else you want to do. I'll now do the same thing for vendor setup. Again, I'll go ahead and kill my vendor setup ones. Boom, boom, boom. And then I'll add fields. The ones I want here are going to be the contract initiator. I think I had, um, where'd it go? There it is, start date, a sponsor, start date, stop date. And I think that was roughly it. Let me go ahead and hit add. If not, they're not required, so it won't be a big deal. Okay. So now we got our start date, end date, uh, sponsor, and initiator. So now we, if we kind of flip around here, we can see that we have a kind of a broken up form now. So it looks pretty good. Now, additionally, if you want to kind of build this closer to be a wizard, we're going to go ahead and want to drop a few buttons in here. So I'll drop a button in here. I'll put it in the bottom right here so it kind of feels like it fits, fits in here. And I'll call this next. And then I'll drop a button in, put it next to it, and this will be, be uh, back. Okay. If you're especially OCD, I'll leave that just a little bit off kilter just for you. All right. All right, there we go. So now, uh, for my next button, of course, we want to change the colors of that and make it make it uh, something a little prettier here. I'll use bar accent just to kind of keep things a little cleaner here. And I'll do the same thing on the, 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 the back one as well. It's going to drive me nuts if I don't do this right now. There we go. So the UI is looking pretty good, right? So what we want to do, though, is I want to show the next button. If I click on next, I want to go to vendor setup. If I'm on vendor setup, I want to go to attachment and so on. So our best bet is probably go ahead and steal this update context code. And on the next statement right here, let's go to the on select of that button and kind of wire it up to be more appropriate here. Right now it says false. I'm going to go ahead and update that and say update context. So if you're on, here, I'll just do this. If you're on uh, if var tab, is equal to basic info. And let me shrink this down just a little bit so I can see these tab names. There we go. If it's equal to basic info, then I want to go ahead and update the context and set you to be equal to vendor setup. There we go. And we could make this a switch statement also. Um, I think that's fine also. Let's see here. We've got our if then statement. There we go. Uh, actually, yeah, actually, that may make sense to put a split switch statement, but that's fine. For, for bigger type of if statements, like well, this is not a big if, if statement, we could also do something like this, where we can say switch. And we can say, all right, var tab is the, what, we're, what we're inspecting. And we can say basic, if, if it's basic info, then do this. Okay. And then we can go ahead and take that, that whole chunk of code right there. And we can say, all right, if it's not basic info, the next step of go to attachments. So that'd be vendor setup. So if you're on vendor setup, then go to attachments. If you're on basic info, go to vendor setup. So now, as I click on basic info, we'll see our thing. If I hit next, there's vendor setup. Hit next again, there's attachments. So the same thing can apply in reverse over to the back button, right? So for the back buttons on select, it's almost the same thing. It's just a little bit of the inverse of that. So in our case, if you're on, um, let's see, in this case, if you're on attachments, you're going to vendor setup. And then if you're on vendor setup, you're going to go to basic info. Okay. So now if I hit the back button, there we go, forward button, and so on. So it's looking pretty good, right? It's, it's, it's not perfect. It's not a, I mean, we, we've been spending maybe five minutes, 10 minutes together so far. So it's, it's not too, too pretty, but at least it's, uh, it's kind of breaking up the information and hopefully get the idea of what we're going for here. Uh, now, now that we've done that, I'm going to kind of skinny this up just a little bit more like that. Okay. So now that we've done that, our next step, oh, also if you're on the final back screen, like I am right now, I probably should go ahead and hide that, right? So the visible property of that, Okay, I'll set the visible property of this that uh, uh, if var tab is equal to basic info, then don't show it. Otherwise, do show it. There it goes, so it hides, but as soon as I hit next, there it shows up again. Back, it disappears, and forward it goes, out, it goes away. And hopefully, it still stays there for that one. It does. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and save this since we did a lot of work right now. 
And now our next step is actually to have this do something with our data. That's our final step for this video. And to do that, I'm gonna go to our final screen right here. And if I'm on the final screen, like I am right now, on this, this area right now, I want that next to say save. So I'll go back over to our final one here, and the text for this. Okay, the text will say if var tab is equal to attachments, then I want to go ahead and say uh, oop, save, else keep the next, just like that. So now it says save, if I hit back, turns to next, all those kind of things are kind of wired up. So now on the save button for save, now the 10 people also will hide, hide or show the button based on certain things, it's completely up to you. But on the final piece here, now that I'm, now that I'm here, I want to go ahead and, and have the code actually kick off. So the on select of that button. Okay, where's my on select here of the button? Uh, do I have it open? Yep. Okay, it's that new alphabet here. You want to make sure you put this code up top first. So, oh, let me kind of clean this up a little bit here. So I want to put the if the if statement up here. The reason why is this code might if it's if, it, if it's at the, at the bottom, it will order it will fire off the save too soon. So what we're going to say now is we're going to say if uh, var tab is equal to attachments, and you're clicking on that next button this time. In other words, you're clicking on save right now. Then we're going to kick off this whole statement right here. There's no else statement here. All of our stuff can go right inside of here, okay? And then we have a little bit of redundant code, I recognize that, but it just, just for simplicity's sake, for you to see my code, this is why I chose to go with. So we're gonna go ahead and patch, patch to our data source. Now I've written a whole video on patching, so this, is, this, this statement's gonna be a little bit different than what we've seen before, because I'm gonna take the results of all three tabs and send it to our database, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and patch this, so patch into our data source, which was called, uh, okay, I thought it was called, oh, where's my data source here? Okay. I forgot what that, that, that table was called. It was called vendor setup. There it is. So I'm gonna patch into vendor setup. I'm gonna create a new record. So I'm gonna use defaults vendor setup. There it is. That creates a new record instead of uh, an update. Then I'm gonna do comma. I want the results of each of those forms that we just created. So I'll say FRM, let's do the basic info one, dot updates. Take the content of all the fields from that and send it to my database. But not only that, I want to go ahead, want you to go ahead and send the next results as well. FRM vendor setup dot updates. And also while you're doing that as well, go ahead and take the, the results from the attachments and send those into the database. Okay, so the basics here are starting to come together. I think I've got let's see here, open, close, patch that in. I don't know what we did differently there. <laughs> we did something differently there though. It now looks like it's working fine. Okay, well, whatever. So I'll put this code in the chat, in the comments box down below, and I'll hit format text so we can kind of see it. But it looks like the way I had to debug it, of course, was uh, take, a, take, a, take a small step back, do the simplest thing you could do in the if-then statement. If that works, then you know your code's okay. So I just pasted in the same patch statement we already did, and it looks like it's happy. So let's see if this gets to the database now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit, uh, hit our play button up top. Go all the way to the beginning. Oh, I have one big, one big problem for all these forms. I forgot to also set them all to new mode for I'm getting new records here. Okay, so let's go to each of those and set them all to new mode. And then after I'm at all done with this, I also need to set this back at the very end here. Okay, let's go ahead also after I do the patch, which is right there, perfect. Uh, I also want to go ahead and, and, and reset this back to new mode, uh, to new, new form also. So I'll do new form and I do each of these actually individually, but I'll just do the well. I'll, I'll, I'll just copy and paste and be lazy here. All right, new form, and then I'll do our next one, and then our last one. What I'm doing here is ultimately making sure that it resets this form back to uh, new mode, so I'm ready for a new record when the next user hits this. 
All right, we may also choose to reset the form as well, but this is good, 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 good practice here. So now let's go ahead and play. I'll hit back, back, back a few times. There we go. I'll go ahead and I thought I changed that to never mind. All right, I'll just change this. Go ahead and type in whatever I want, whatever I want, and so on. Pick initiator. Hit my brother. Pick a sponsor. There we go. And then I'll do a start date, end date. Good enough. I'll, I'll skip the, uh, some, of these, some of these fields, hit the attachments. I'll upload whatever file I can find. I'll just do this guy right here. And then when I'm all done, I shall hit save. And let's see what happens. Okay. By theory, let's go over to our, our system over here. Oh, look at that. There's our record. Sweet. So our record made it over here. And we, if we can actually select this record, we can go and actually see all of our attachments. All of our stuff is now broken up into individual pieces for us. And it just made a, a nicer UI, I think. So if I go back to that one more time, I, of course, I, knew I would want to navigate them back to the, to the previous screen, but I'll just do that manually right here. And then if I come back fresh, we would, of course, want to also reset this form to back to its known good state here. But as you can see, it looks like our data is getting here. So I can go ahead and hit next, next again, since I didn't actually uh, uh, save it this time. Let's go ahead and save that one more time. I should now have two records in a moment here. There it is again. So in this video, I hope you can see some of, some of the neat UI practices you can do by using those contextual variables to show and hide different things and kind of create the best parts of a wizard on the bottom, the best parts of tabs up top. Uh, we, of course, would want to reset these forms to make it where it actually did that and have them navigate back to the previous screen. And we've seen that we have some how to do some basic coloring on this as well by as I select these tabs, how we can how we can kind of change the colors based on that tab selection there as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This video is part of our series on Power Apps. We have a lot of training on Power Apps uh, at PragmaticWorks.com. We also do things like boot camps to help those that want a hardcore uh, learning experience. We do things like on-demand learning, where we have a whole bunch of Power uh, Power Apps and Power Automate classes, about 65 classes on demand. And then lastly, we do hackathons and virtual mentoring, where we can help you if you get unstuck. So come visit us at PragmaticWorks.com. And also, please do subscribe to us uh, so you can find out when we have future videos. Thanks for joining me today, and uh, so I hope to see you in future videos. Thanks so much.